Well, hey, what's up, YouTube? Pastor Matt here. Hey, question for you. Do you have a fence around your yard? Uh, yeah, you know, a white picket fence to make it look quaint and beautiful. Do you have an old rusty metal fence that keeps your yard intact? Do you have an old wooded, slatted, falling apart fence? A fence is something to keep the precious stuff in, whether children or crops or dogs or whatever you have, and the bad guys out. And today, what we want to do is to talk about what we call in the Reformed tradition, fencing the table. And of course, we're talking about the communion table. So if you're a pastor, uh, you probably use what is called the words of institution that come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And if you're not a pastor, you probably heard your pastor read something like this at the Lord's table. Uh, it begins, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's with reference to uh, the bread. And then for the cup, it says, in the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And with that, we introduce uh, the elements to the people who are going to commune at the table. But before we do that, at least in the Reformed tradition, we do what is called fencing the table. And I want to talk for a moment about three ways that we fence it with an open gate, with a closed gate, and with a locked gate. So first of all, what about the open gate? Well, at Faith Church, my church, and I'm Presbyterian, belong to the Evangelical Presbyterian Church denomination, and uh, we commonly have an open gate for all believers who come to commune with us on any particular given Sunday. Uh, we tend to celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday of the month, Sunday of the month, and also some special occasions like Easter and uh, Christmas Eve and things like that. And what I typically do is I will invite everybody who is a true believer in Christ to feel free to come to the table, even if they're not a member of our church. And I know that's a little bit sketchy, and some people would disagree on that. But if somebody's traveling, they're coming from out of town, uh, maybe they're visiting our church for the first time, but they are they're a committed Christian believer, then we welcome them to participate at the Lord's table, even as we confess our sins together and prepare our hearts for the receiving of the elements. And by the way, we should do that. Uh, Paul says that we ought to examine ourselves before we come to the table. And uh, that way we don't want to make a mess of the body and the blood of Christ or pollute it or misunderstand it or blaspheme it in any way. Uh, but we do have an open gate uh, for anyone who is a Christian to come and to celebrate with us at the Lord's Supper. Now we have a closed gate for children. And let me explain by that. Close is not locked. It just means that uh, there's an open and shut process. And so when it comes to children in our church, what we do is we ask parents to bring them to the elders first, pastors or elders. We also have ruling elders in our church. And part of the job for us is to help children understand what they're actually doing at the table. Uh, so we have a little interview. It's kind of informal, but it's a thing we do. We have parents bring the children to us first, and we'll make sure that they understand the basic story of the gospel, Jesus' death and his resurrection? Do they understand what the bread is pointing to as a sign and seal? Do they understand why we drink the cup of, of red juice or wine that points to the blood of Christ? Uh, do they know the Ten Commandments? Are they memorizing the Apostles' Creed? Are they learning the Lord's Prayer? Are they on the path of Christian obedience? And once they've come, and we think it's kind of a big step for children to come to the elders. I know that's a little bit scary. Uh, but if they can do that and talk about the gospel realities that the signs uh, point to in sealing us in the covenant, then we think that they're ready to uh, to commune, even if even if they're young and they don't get it all. Because who does? Do you get it all? I don't. There's mysterious aspects to the Lord's Supper that even an ordained Presbyterian minister uh, is still learning. Uh, so we open the gate to children once they under demonstrate that they have an understanding of the gospel. Then we have what's called a closed gate for unbelievers. And I know this is going to sound harsh because nobody wants to be judgmental these days anymore. But at our church, we do not allow unbelievers to participate in the Lord's Supper. In fact, we forbid them to do so. And I say that in explicit language every time we receive the Lord's Supper. I say, if you do not accept Christ as Lord and Savior, do not take these elements. And the way that I express that, if you're looking for some language that might help, is I tell the unbeliever that we're not asking them to pretend to be anything that they are not. Uh, and so I think it sort of a, comes as a relief to them, that we're not asking you to be a hypocrite. We're not asking you to pretend you're a Christian if, in fact, you are not. And uh, only you would know that. I wouldn't be able to know that. Uh, but we do forbid 
unbelievers from coming to the Lord's Supper. Because again, Paul says that we ought to examine ourselves to see that we are in the faith. Okay, so we've got an open gate, we've got a closed gate that swings open and shut, and then we have a locked gate. And that's how we do the Lord's Supper. Hope you're doing that too. I hope you're fencing the table, pastors. Uh, that's part of our pastoral duty. Remember, the word pastor means shepherd. And in this case, we're shepherding sheep into the gate, bringing them into the pasture that is green and good and verdant and abundant and um, wonderful as we come to the table to meet our Lord and commune with him. Hey, I'd like to hear whether or not you fence the table and how you do it in the comment section below. And what is a YouTube video without a book recommendation after all anyways? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to this book right here, John Frame's Systematic Theology, in the description of this video. Links it over to Amazon. Go get yourself some good theology. Love myself some John Frame, one of my professors at RTS. And uh, that book has a wonderful section on the Lord's Supper. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for checking in on my videos. Don't forget, you can like and subscribe. That's awesome. Also, follow me on Twitter, Matt underscore Everhard at Twitter. Uh, Facebook, I do all that kind of stuff. And the preaching page is Faith Evangelical Presbyterian Church. That's the YouTube page for sermons. Okay, check you later. Love you lots. Talk to you soon.